very proud of the safety at Cliff. It has improved over the last six years. We are currently feel safe that everybody can come into work and go home to work and everybody's working safely with all the improvements that we've made. We have various ways that we can report safety issues through the communications forum, site safety monthly she meetings and through individual line managers. Uh, one of the suggestions came from the communications forum was uh, to install an acoustic booth at the machine behind me uh, to reduce the noise levels. By redesigning the guarding distance, it's helped create space around the machine for cleaning. Site housekeeping was made a priority and we reorganised the whole of the site from each factory out to the yard. Well, this is to make our lives a lot safer with, uh, in terms of vibration exposure. We have this React Tech tag system now where we can put a meter, take the meter from here and put it on our tool and then we have a, a traffic light system on here to make sure that we don't have too much exposure throughout the day when we're using power tools. Uh, here on the cliff site we've got three factories, uh, Rakers 1, 2 and 3. Some of the improvements we've made are by painting the floors, uh, green for safe walkways, uh, red for forklifts and yellow for storage. We've also put in uh, lifting aids to minimise the use of forklift trucks within inside the factory. We're now working on uh, high red platforms uh, with full arrest systems for more non-routine jobs such as working on the Cuba. Since the meetings have been put in, the, uh, it's much more easier to uh, get ideas and to approach people to get things sorted out more quickly. Uh, it's become more transparent. All the employees feel part of the team and being able to contribute in whatever way they can. As a company we have a lot of um, employees that as part of their working day drive a lot and that's in operations and in supporting functions like sales um, and we were becoming increasingly aware as a company of the hazards on the road of using mobile phones and even though it's not illegal to use a hands-free kit um, we, were, we were conscious that we were still potentially putting employees at risk and other road users. So as an organisation we developed a standard around mobile phone use in cars and we set about putting together a comms plan to launch this on the 1st of January this year. Now ahead of that launch we felt it was really important that we didn't want this to be a compliance matter. We wanted employees to genuinely buy in to the safety and health reasons about not using mobile phones in cars. So it was really important for us to develop some communication material to get that message across. And we used some really hard hitting facts around the dangers of using um, mobile phones in cars. And equally, we used some very graphic videos. And there was some discussion around that. And I think some people felt, oh, is it gonna be too hard hitting? But um, the feedback we got was that it really got the message across. We've also had external customers, external suppliers hearing about um, how we've implemented and come and asked us to share our experience and our materials, which is great. Um, we don't want to be complacent um, and we do recognise that some employees might still be struggling. So what we've done recently um, as a switch working group, we continue to meet on a monthly basis and we've um, issued a survey and in two weeks we've had over 450 responses so far, which again shows that people are passionate about the subject and as part of that survey we've asked for feedback about what has worked well for people so that where we have got ideas and best practice ideas we can share that um, and equally if some people are still struggling we can understand what those challenges are and we can support them to make sure that they um, feel safe and when they're on the roads that they're not feeling that they're putting themselves and others at risk. We wanted Hope Construction Materials to aspire to be the best and the safest company in the industry. And to do that, we need to generate and create our own health and safety culture. Part of developing a health and safety culture and a strong health and safety culture is to have good leadership from the senior management team, but also to get involvement and engagement from the entire workforce. Our CEO invited all the directors and senior managers of the business to become advocates for safety, to inspire people and to lead by example and to do that by going out on site, visiting all our sites and promoting safe working. So last year, every one of our sites was visited by a director of the company 
and we did over 1,100 hours of visible felt safety leadership out on site. From my point of view, they're very, very worthwhile, not only from uh, my perspective where I get to learn about the organisation as a whole, but also it demonstrates that we, uh, that we lead from the front um, and we, uh, we uh, walk the talk. Uh, we meet up with our teams, hear what they have to say, understand their concerns and, uh, and empower them to put that right. Another key part of our developing a health and safety culture is to make sure that the workforce are fully involved. That's not just our direct employees, but all colleagues, service partners and our holier population. What we'd like them to do is to intervene if they see unsafe conditions in our workplace and put those conditions right, or if they see people working in a way that puts their safety at risk, to intervene and protect them. And we call that welcome intervention, and it's something that we've rolled out across our business. To help get welcome intervention established and communicated across our business, some of the guys here at Hope Works produced a small short film that really explains what welcome intervention is about. The film is available on YouTube, so all our colleagues can access it, but more than that, anyone else in the industry who's interested can also access it and share it. So far, since we launched Welcome Intervention back in April this year, we've had more than 1,000 welcome interventions. And any one of those welcome interventions may have prevented a lost time or serious injury.